Greetings! Welcome to the devlog for update 93 of Hot Dogs, Horseshoes, and Hand Grenades. We're going to start off as always with a quick sound check. Make sure speakers aren't up too high. <laughs> Wonderful. So what have we got for you this week? Well, it is the end of shotgun month. I didn't get to all of the shotguns that I wanted to. There's a few that are going to be reserved for some future update, but I'm ending with a bang. I've gotten to uh, a couple that I think are uh, have been long requested and are quite iconic. So let's dive right into the first one. I think a bunch of you know what it is. The Pancor Jackhammer. Finally. Just look at it. Look at it. Oh absolutely gorgeous i have actually had this model for an embarrassingly long amount of time i commissioned it years ago but because i had only recently i basically hadn't come up with a clever way to handle the revolving cylinder uh of it i just kept kicking it down the road and never getting around to it but it is finally here we've got a uh, a 12 round cylinder that we can pop up Pop in. Note, this is a very video game implementation of this gun. And the reason you should all watch the Forgotten Weapons video on it is that this was just a shop room prototype. It was never sort of finished as a, as a sort of production line weapon. You have to basically disassemble it to reload it uh, in real life. Um, but it's gorgeous, and so it is implemented here basically in the same way that the P612 is, which is you just swap the cylinder, make sure you're not on safe, and fire away. It's also been given a little bit of a, a little bit of video gaminess to, to its sound. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, as you can see, empties in there. Pop that in there. Let's reset this. Send it further away. Let's fire it a little offset to the side. The other eyes, you can see it better. <laughs> Devastating. So there you have it. The jackhammer. Finally. Oh, such a such a beefy one. It feels huge in game. Oh, I just love it. I love it. And to go with this, we've got another, in certain ways, even rarer piece from uh, the amount of reference material that's available. We have the cause. <laughs> oh, look at you. Absolutely beastly. This, uh, this was a, pr a prototype, I believe, around the same time as the G11, and as you can see, is, 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 is designed with that same sort of <laughs> German space marine aesthetic that the, uh, the, the G11 was. This, this is a shotgun that fires uh, a special 12-gauge belted round uh, brass casings absolutely beastly this is in certain ways one of the most powerful shotguns in the game now um because i definitely i tuned the ammo based on sort of what they were thinking of making uh for this which was like you know a, a significantly more penetrative slug super super high velocity flechettes it is just it's it's a nightmare shotgun um and is uh yeah quite effective this has an integrated optic in it <laughs> fun there it is on full auto and we've got a uh, we've got a 10 round box and i've got a 20 round drum for it honestly though i i, I think it looks better with the box on <laughs> so yeah this is this is probably now the most ridiculous shotgun uh, in the game, and because this is, you know, this is the this is what the the prototype looked like. It's sort of post-war era integrated optic and things like that. I know tons of you love playing with rails, and this is being such a Space Marine-looking gun. I decided to do a mod of it, uh, similar to the G11 TAC, TAC mod that looks like this. Top rail in. I've sort of I've removed the integrated optic, bent the the bolt handle to the side popped a few more rails on it so we can go in here and we can just turn this into 
some sort of monstrosity. In fact, we're gonna pair this with, uh, with a new attachment addition, I, I actually put in, separated from the rifle frame, a Picatinny attached version of the G36 top rails, which frankly put is, is sort of thematically appropriate for this gun. Cool. And uh, let's see, let's get, a, let's get a muzzle device on this. Something nice and ridiculous looking. Oh, that's going to be enormous because of how this scales up. Boom! <laughs> oh, that's just unreasonable. And let's get a four. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Yeah, got to have the big one. Boom. There you have it. There is our <laughs> cause tech mod. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Wonderful. I want to hear that unsuppressed one more time. <laughs> oh, I hope you folks have as much fun with this as I have. And then last, on the shotgun front, uh, at least realistic shotgun front, we have a long requested single barrel break action shotgun. Sort of a throwback style. This is uh, this one is in 20 gauge, but there is both a 12 and 20 gauge version of this in the item spawner. So, for those of you who just enjoy plinking or just love this, uh, you know, nice and svelte full length break action, there you have it. <laughs> Wonderful. Such a beaut. Such a beaut. Anywho, let's jump over to the proving ground now to continue seeing what is in this week's update. So, over in the proving ground, and it's time that I showed you folks the uh, the latest Meat Fortress equipment edition. This time for the Scout, and that is an alt weapon called the Duck Hunter, which is our stocked full length version of the scatter gun. It basically has a tighter choke in it, uh, actually has a stock, and oh my goodness, a functional front and back sight, which allows you to uh, obviously engage in more than short range, and we've got a fun set of ammos to go with it. Obviously, there's still the classic, you know, buckshot that was already in the game. Actually, you know what? That's before we go shooting these off. Let's spawn lock all of these. Do, 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 do. Let's spawn ourselves some assistance. <laughs> See, what'd be more, more annoying than more me? Boom. So we've got a slug available now. <laughs> Wonderful. Don't you ever grill me again. <laughs> Fire a few more of those. Wonderful. We've got, uh, oh man, I have already forgotten the cause. I believe this one is, uh, this one's Bleeder. That first one was Slugger. This one is, uh, is our Flechette round. Come on, I gotta check my messages. Which gives you some real rapid bleed out. We got Blooper. As you can see, it's a baseball theme, which is sort of a short range smoke round. Like so. Easier to see outside. And then the last one, I'm gonna actually have to go outside in a sec to demonstrate this one. Cause this one's called Moonshot. It's sort of a, it's a really hot buckshot which some, with some special properties. Just freestanding with it, you'll notice. Hey buddy, you gotta feel like I wish. Hit the spike with my car. It knocks me back. As you might imagine, it's useful for other things. I wanted to come out here 
out to the Arizona range because I didn't want to hit my head on the ceiling to show you the other effect of moonshot. As you can see, if we're just standing on the ground, it sort of recoils us backwards, which I'm glad it just happened to work well uh, doing that. But in addition, this is now basically a sort of blast jump ammo in addition to the high damage it does. So if we run forward... <laughs> I'm still tuning the exact amount that it knocks you into the air because part of me really, really enjoys uh, sailing through, uh, through the air for long periods of time. But I know at the same time, if you're up in the air too much, you basically just have no control at all or can fling yourself out of the level. So still tuning this. Let me know what you think, but it's quite fun. <laughs> to play around with. Um, and honestly, the fact that it worked as well as it does means I can probably do some other fun stuff in the future involving effects that uh, knock you around or uh, recoil you. In the game, Wee. And then for the scout's grenade, we've got Mount Thunder, high impact energy drink in gun flavor. This is basically like a buff grenade. Note, I don't have the visual effect for the Sosigs in for this yet. I have the sort of the buff state for them, but I eventually am gonna add like a little bit of like a trail zooming effect so it's a little more obvious that they're being affected by it, but I ran out of time this week for that. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's spawn, let's actually spawn like a slower class to wander around. How do I wanna do this? Um, keep them on the same. Let's see if I can actually get them to... Ah, you know what? They're gonna... I'm, instead of spawning the Meat Fortress ones, I'm gonna spawn some regular Sosigs, because they won't be armed, so they will constantly Nashi. wander around. My fists are not oh, oh, God! Oh, the heavy's gonna kill them all. Oh, this was not intended, but all of you I can deal with it. Meat. There we go. Now they're moving around. Ooh. You are cool. This what is... sick man sends we need to fight me. I'll get you next time. This this has gotta be a crime. What sick man sends we need There we go. Now the heavy's moving faster. You are well done. Anyway, that, that, that's enough, buddy. There we go. So, as you can see here, basically the effect of this is for about 20 seconds, any bots hit from it will have their maximum speed increased by 2x, and all of their reaction times will go up. They'll respond to targets faster, they'll move their guns faster, they'll move their hands around faster, etc. It's basically the opposite of the freeze effect that I added last week. Still needs some tuning, but it's part of a general thing where I'm trying to come up with some more it's interesting... It's a lonely out here. I know. Come up with some more interesting status effects for the SOSIGs that I can eventually generalize in, uh, in more interesting ways. And then lastly, we are back over in the sand trap scene, as I promised you that this week I would let you know what this scene is all about and what it is that I have been working on. Now, in certain ways, this is a bit of a premature announcement in that I don't have everything that I'm working on uh, working yet or ready to play with. This is more of an announcement of I am working on this because there's a whole bunch of folk who, you know, muck around with the game's code base and it's become too difficult for me to hide that I'm working on this from folks who do that. So I figured I might as well announce this on my terms, even though it's going to be a while till I have something that you you can play with yet. And so I'd like to announce a system I'm working on called Game Planner. It is essentially a, a t attempt number two at doing a user scenario system for the game. The old system was called the UGS. I attempted it like two, two or more years ago. I was not a good enough programmer to do it at all. I was not ready for it. I ran into so many brick walls, but I've learned a ton since I tried that and I'm giving it another shot. I have more help this time uh, and I'm way more confident in it. So what is, so I'm gonna give you basically just the overview of what the vision 
for what Game Planner is. The idea is that any scene in the game, eventually, that is a sandbox scene, that basically isn't a sort of wholly constructed mode like Taken Hold or Rot Wieners, will have the ability to spawn this tool here, which is our sort of game planner panel with a tactical staple gun attached to it, and will be able to go between two different modes play mode, which it will be default, so you'll sort of spawn into by default the way sandbox play typically works, or design mode. And in design mode, you're going to be able to set up and configure all sorts of stuff and save that scenario. And so this is designed to encompass a whole bunch of stuff that you folks have been requesting for a very long time. Folks who want to just set up a bunch of iron targets in their favorite range and save that configuration, you'll be able to use this panel to do this. Folks who want to play, want to configure a custom breaching scene scenario, will be able to actually lay out bot spawners and determine what bots spawn there, where the player spawns, what weapons the player starts with, and they'll be able to save that. And likely all sorts of stuff I can't even envision. I'm going to be focused on building essentially the building blocks of those things and building a couple scenes like Sand Trap here that are designed... How to put this? What I essentially want to do with the scenes for this system is to do the hard part. Meaning, make them efficient, get the physics perfect, get all of the nav mesh and the occlusion culling perfect, but still keep them at a sort of partially blank canvas state so that you can then fill those designed environments that are really built around to use all of H3 systems maximally with the type of play that you want to do and be able to do it really efficiently. So, as I said, super early, I don't have content loaded into this because I've been like, I've been zipping and unzipping parts of my project so that this code doesn't leak into the game accidentally with updates. Um, but I can just show you real quick, as an example, you'll be able to just spawn objects. This is just a testing cube. Use the, uh, the manipulator tool. Come on, work for me. There we go. Move things around. This is like nudge on a single axis. You'll be able to shunt things, which is like move until something stops. There's going to be grids and guides and pretty much anything you would want. Local, 15 degrees. There we go. As I said, still working on the tools to be able to set things up. And I'm going to be essentially building kits for you folks for this walls and barriers, destructible objects. I've got a backlog of like a dozen different types of steel targets uh, that are gonna be going into this system. And basically what you're gonna see is a lot of the future effort of the game that basically anything that isn't going into a pre-existing structured mode like take and hold, I'm going to focus the effort on making that new content instead of idiosyncratically sort of living on its own island for this system so that it eventually sort of builds and you can sort of cross-pollinate ideas, content sets, etc. Once it's stabilized, I'm also going to slowly migrate over the game's sandbox scenes to this system. So to even something like the, uh, the Friendly 45 scene, most of the targets that are laid out will just be a default scenario configuration that the scene loads with, but you can then duplicate that configuration, change it, and save it. So yeah, and if it all works, and we get all the data validation working, eventually workshop support in some form. Haven't figured out any of the details of that yet, but that is the eventual goal. Just wanna shout that out because I know it'll be the first thing you folks will ask. So yeah, so obviously I don't have a ton of it to show you right now. It's mostly stubbed out and stuff <laughs> that's still <laughs> zipped and stripped out of the project. So I accidentally don't push it live. Um, but yeah, so that is what I've been working on and that is the vision for what the, the sort of next big push really for the rest of the year for H3 is going to be about. Well, let's go ahead and jump out of VR and quickly cover the last things that are in this week's update. Yo, so yeah, those of you who've been hanging around in the Discord and such and have heard me complaining over the past couple weeks about just drowning in UI work and data structure work, this 
is why. Um, and I've, I've sort of kept tight-lipped on it because when I tried to do this the first time, the I ran into sort of two core problems that sort of ran the idea of having sort of in-game tools for scenario creation to the ground. One was a serialization issue. I didn't know how to efficiently save and organize data and build everything in a way that was like future-proof that didn't get like exponentially more work intensive as I added content to the system. So I, I now know how to do that better and I've gotten some help from Syndicat and others on uh, in terms of both saving and loading files correctly, but also just in, in approaching this design in a sane way. And the second thing I ran into in a big way was about the efficiency of adding content to the system, making sure that I didn't have to do all of these really, really fussy manual things just to inject an object into the system. And well, in the past two, two and a half years, I've gotten a lot better at writing automation tools for myself in Unity. And so I know that I can do that far more efficiently now. And just straight up, I think since then, I've got a better idea of what the play loops that people enjoy engaging in in the game are and I have a good idea of the sort of base components that I need to create to enable that. So an example of what that might be is if you look at the Proving Ground scene, there's a bunch of stuff for that little team fight area that is invisible that I had to configure for it to work. There's basically spawn points for each team. There's the points that they're trying to attack towards for each team. And then there's that panel that is essentially saying who should spawn on each side and what equipment they have. And I've exposed a couple options on that UI, but obviously not everything that could be. Instead, imagine that you could just place down as objects a bunch of spawn points, a bunch of attack points, team zero, team one, and then have a plinth where you set up who is on team zero, who is on team one, bunch of set like respawn time, things like that, and then just save that as a scenario preset for you. That is the vision for this. It's not necessarily just about making big things or just about simple sandbox play, but I want to try to make a smooth system that encompasses both of those things. Because I know the player base of this game is super diverse. Folks like doing very, very different things. And so I want to try to make a system that enables that. And especially to make, how to put this, I think a lot of user-generated content tools that exists in games end up serving a very, very small percentage of the player base because they're either really obtuse um, or they're not documented or the interface isn't fun or it's like entirely external to the game. And I don't want to create a system where a tiny number of people will use it and make content for everyone, but instead is designed to be right there, be right in your face and super accessible in every one of these scenes and making the process of like tweaking things and saving your presets part of the core play loop for as many people as possible. So, so yeah, as for the other stuff that is in this week's update, uh, really quickly, I added a max decal count option uh, in that work in progress section in the options panel. You can now set it between like five or a thousand. Um, I added a, uh, there are several of those G36 style attachments um, that you can slap onto the top of, uh, of various guns. There's now a matching calibrated carry handle sight for the M16A4 um, that spawns with it automatically. I ran out of time for, because of how I have to do my asset bundles and push a build to actually make it a separate object. But if you spawn the M16A4, it'll come with it. I'll make it a separate object later. The Evo 3 has a mag release button. Uh, there's some new status effects for the So6, like I showed off. The Night Iron Sights and True Fire Suppressor have had their a, like FDE tan, or their color change to match the Mark 18 Mod Zero, and the tan on the Mark 18 Mod Zero has been fixed. So they're all consistent to each other, and it's the correct color now. Sorry about that. Um, and I replaced the models and textures for the angled foregrips with a more up-to-date model that's cleaner, looks nicer, and the tan now matches the Mark 18, the new Mark 18 as well. In terms of fixes, I finally fixed the old-timey spectacles unlock uh, from Worst World. So remember, you need to have bloom and color correction enabled to see that effect. 
Um, I fixed a oh I fixed a bug with the rolling blo block Creedmoor, some pose issues, um, and some old the old version of the ammo spawner was showing up in a couple scenes weirdly, so that's been fixed. So yeah, so that is everything for this update. As I said, there's a couple things that are still a little rough around the edges. Um, I kind of ran out of time, and for the j just so you folks know, after this update, I'm going to be taking like a one to two week break. Um, both because the last couple updates have this been a pretty intense month in terms of content and because I have a repetitive stress injury on my right arm. It's one of the reasons why you always see me wearing this elbow brace that has gotten real bad over the past week or so. It slowed down my ability to finish um, stuff for this update and doing like light work or one day breaks was not helping. Um, and so I'm going to just, I'm going to largely immobilize the arm for a week, just ice a lot. Just watch a bunch of Netflix or something and not use a computer so that I can get myself recuperated, um, get this arm back in better shape so that I can jump back into uh, this game planner system that, I, that I've that i teased you folks because um, I'm super jazzed about it. I've been, been planning all of the different game piece ideas I have for it, the types of kits. I'm bringing in a couple other contract artists to make kits. Uh, for this and help me with the process of making uh, a couple more scenes and basically what you're gonna see from me is is almost sort of like a, a bifurcated content development model for the game over the next month or two where stuff that's actually in the game builds then releases that you're gonna see is just gonna be largely new weapons polish bug fixes and things like that whereas I'm still gonna be showing off in devlogs and probably streaming again stuff that I'm working on game planner until I can get it to the point where it's stable enough for a public beta um, and I'm holding off I'm not giving it to you folks super early and super broken because it involves saving and loading files and anytime you have an unstable and untested system that is doing IO there's a risk of data loss I don't want to mess anyone's computer up or screw up their local data or even frankly put have folks invest time and energy into making cool things and then having to just delete them because I have to change the data format so I will let you folks play with this when I'm pretty much positive I won't have to delete anything you make with it and the data format will be stable enough that I can at least forward my forward migrate things you make um, as I advance it. So, so yeah, I'm sure you folks will have tons of questions. Some I'll be able to answer and a whole lot of it is still a giant question mark. Like, we'll see how it goes. We'll see, you know, what I end up adding. But I hope you folks are excited uh, about this. And uh, obviously I'll have, uh, I'll have more as the, as the weeks and months progress for it. So I hope you all have a uh, wonderful weekend and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.